I just want to put a disclaimer out before you watch this video. It's going to be really technical. I got really frustrated tonight, but it's here. So I'm sorry for the lack of production or whatever, but if you want to know how to update your phone, your OnePlus 3, to the newest version of Oxygen OS 3.2.0, I will show you in a very frustrating way. Okay, it's almost 11 p.m. I've actually been working on this for the last couple hours, but I wanted to update my OnePlus 3 to the newest version of Oxygen OS 3.2.0, but I know that OnePlus had canceled that. They had halted the operations of updating it to 3.2.0 because there were some issues that were going on, but because I'm impatient and I just want to update regardless of what issues there are, I was gonna go ahead and install it manually. Now, this was supposed to be done a couple hours ago, but I was having such a hard time but I'm gonna go over it just to show you how it was difficult for me and maybe this will help you avoid that kind of issue if you're trying to update it on your own now currently I'm on oxygen OS 3.1.3 let me double check here yeah oxygen OS version 3.1.3 now what I'm trying to do is to update to 3.2.0 now there is a way to do it by side loading it and it should really be straightforward which is what I was trying to do today but for someone like me that needs to use it under ADB it wouldn't connect to that now if you're not that technical this might be a little confusing so I'm just gonna go through the steps but I'm gonna show you the issues I was running into but before I even go there if you want to update this to 3.2.0 the first things that you're gonna need to do is you are gonna need to go into to developer options if you don't know how to get into developer options what you need to do is go to about phone go to the build number and you're gonna tap this a couple times until it says you know press X amount of times to get into developer mode or you're gonna be a developer I'm already there so you go into developer options you want to make sure it's on and then you are gonna go ahead and make sure that USB debugging is enabled. So that's the first thing that you need to do. The second thing that you need to do is you need to find the particular file to update to 3.2.0. Because I'm on version 3.1.3, there's a specific file to get to 3.2.0. If you're on 3.1.2, there's a different file for that one to get to 3.2.0. The same goes for 3.1.1 and 3.1.0. I'll leave links for all of this stuff in the description. Okay, so step one, you enable developer options, enable USB debugging. Step two, you downloaded the proper file, the proper firmware file for 3.2.0. Step three, you're gonna need to download something called Minimal ADB and Fastboot. I, again, will leave a link in the description. This is the software that you're gonna need so you can put the commands in to update to 3.2.0. Now, remember, 3.2.0 got paused, got suspended for a reason because they're having issues. So please know that if you are gonna update it, you might have issues with it. So if you're gonna update, do it at your own risk. All right, I'm gonna show you really quick the issue I was running into. And unfortunately, I've been working on this for hours. I've been pulling my hair out because I couldn't figure out what was going on. I downloaded different ADB software, I downloaded different drivers, and none of that was working. Let me show you what I mean. Now, when I take my OnePlus 3 and I connect it to USB on my laptop, It'll automatically recognize it here as a portable device, the OnePlus A3000. And while that's all fine and dandy, that's not what I'm looking for. I need it to show up as a regular Android device. Typically, what you need to do is you need to go into this file, update driver software, browse my computer for driver software, you pick from a list, and then there should be a different list here for ADB. And it doesn't show that at all. None of these show ADB. And so I tried uninstalling the software, I tried uninstalling drivers, reinstalling, none of that was working. And then after playing around with it, it dawned on me, what you need to do is you're gonna click one plus three, you're gonna uninstall it, and then you're gonna add legacy hardware. When you add legacy hardware, you're gonna install the hardware that I manually select, hit next, and now they have Android device here. When I pick Android device, now I have ADB. And I think there's a bunch of them because I was downloading a bunch of ADB drivers because I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I go ahead, I hit next. Now it's an Android ADB interface. Now the next thing you need to do is you're gonna need to turn your phone off and put it into recovery. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn it off, power it off. After you power it off, you need to hold the power button and you need to hold the down volume button or the volume down button. You're probably gonna hold it between like six to eight seconds, maybe less. When you see the title screen come up, you can let go. You'll hear it vibrate too, so you don't have to mess with it. Okay, when you get to this point, you're gonna use the volume rockers to move up and down. 
you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna pick English, hit the power button to go to the next. Then you're gonna install from ADB. Hit the power button again. Upgrade Android from USB, hit okay. Now it says you are in side load mode. Load package with ADB side load and then the file name. Now I should be able to run minimal ADB and fast boot. And when I type ADB devices, Now it shows me my device. Earlier, it wasn't showing me any of that because it wasn't under ADB. Okay, so I hope you followed me here. If you didn't, just ask me in the comments. I will try to help you out if you're trying to update to 3.2.0. Now, after you download that firmware file, you actually need to take that particular file and you need to put it in the installation folder where minimal ADB and fastboot is located. So I'm running Windows 10. I'll show you real quick. And mine was located in program files x86, minimal ADB and fast boot, and you see here it's called op320.zip. It was actually a much, much longer name, but you don't want that. You want to like label it something that you can remember. After you're in side load mode, then you can go ahead and type in ADB side load, and then the name of the zip that you called it. I called mine op320.zip. Okay, for some reason it's not finding it. Sometimes what you can do too, if it doesn't work, is you can just do ADB side load, and you can actually take the file, and just drag it over. And you see, now it's doing it. I'll show you here on my phone. So it says here, updating, please wait. I don't know why that happens. Maybe it just wants the exact, exact location. But right now it is downloading the update from I had oxygen 3.1.3 to 3.2.0. Again, this video was to be a little more detailed, but I've just spent the last couple hours trying to figure out why I couldn't get it to read on ADB. I've never had such an issue with that. I think that happens really with uh, systems that are running Windows 10. So let me know if you try this out and see if this helped at all. Okay, it looks like we're successfully installed. We're gonna go ahead and reboot. Now, this should update to 3.2.0 from 3.1.3. I'm sorry if the video is kinda rushed, I've just spent the entire day today trying to get this to work or the entire evening. Now 3.2.0 offers a couple things like enabling sRGB in developer options. So you get more of a natural display instead of a more saturated one. There are updates to better RAM management for the six gigs that's on this phone. I also read there's better audio quality, like audio playback quality, and also improved camera quality. All that has to be seen I'll be sure to do some testing. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna know, but I'll take it. It's the newest version. I'll see if I can run into these issues that people are talking about or that OnePlus is talking about. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it that they had to actually like halt it. I know the issue was a little twofold as well because IMEIs were showing or something like that. I didn't really read into all of that that much. Honestly, I just wanted to get it updated to 3.2.0. I felt left out that other people got it and I didn't. And for me, I'm willing to take those risks. I suppose that's why I run Android N developer previews because I can live with a little bugginess. It gives me things to look forward to in fixing and I get to see what things have been upgraded. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. Okay, looks like we're good to go. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and go into the settings here. Oxygen OS 3.2.0. So it looks like it worked. Really quick, let's go into developer options. We should be, here we go. Picture color mode, use, use sRGB. I don't know if the camera caught that. Oh, it looks like it did. I can see it on the screen here. So now we have sRGB. Actually, in sRGB mode, you could already tell, at least I can already tell, with this background, it looks a lot more muted than the original. Let's go ahead and take a look. Bring it back here. I'm pretty sure you could tell a difference on the screen. Anyway, 
I'm gonna leave it here for now. It's late, I'm tired. I still have to edit the rest of this video tonight, so it's gonna come out late. But hopefully this will help you update to 3.2.0 if you're looking for it. I will see you tomorrow.